Good afternoon. It's Friday, March 11, 2011. Jill Sealand yep. here with your Earner Berry Mark Report, sponsored by Australian yeah, I mean, Premium Brands. You know, uh, Make sure you I stay tuned today for an inside look at this week's itself, price trends um, and movers for the food service industry from Earner Berry's HRI Buyer's Guide, as well as the final installment like, in our German Butcher series. In today's video, we revisit Wolfgang and his son Andrew as they break um, down the second half you know, of the hind quarter, the loin. First, though, let's check out the markets. Looking at poultry and the chicken market, the complex is closing this week in great shape. Current offerings have been no more than adequate to short across the board. Wogs and Holberts are rated full steady to firm. Tenders are the tightest item on the sheet. Trim and chunk meats are commanding full market or better. Dark meat lines are in close balance for most needs. Talking turkey, the undertone of the majority of the turkey market okay. continues to be a strong one. Buyer interest on all raw material ranges from active to brisk. Offerings are no more than adequate to short for overall needs. Whole body turkeys are rated full steady to firm. Consumer sizes are snug, but toms above 22 pounds are especially tight and possibly higher. Necks continue to be unsettled. Wings command no less than full market values, with the same being true of drums. In the egg market, the cartoned market appears to be settling at current levels. Supplies okay. of jumbos through large are adequate to available. Okay. Retail demand is somewhat improved. Moving over to red meats, taking a look at pork, bids for hogs are expected to range steady to weaker today. Yeah, yeah. Packers reportedly have early weak needs already met and are awaiting indications of future market direction before further committing. Thus far today, hams are still mixed. Supplies of bellies are limited. Sellers of fresh pork okay. products like loins, butts, and sparebs are reporting a much improved sold position, and recent premiums are evidence of that fact. Further premiums are being sought today, but trade is anticipated to be light. Now let's revisit Wolfgang and Andrew as we continue our German Butcher series. Today we take you back to the action as they break down the loin. Okay, what we what we have here is the hind quarter. We already split, uh, separated the short the loin off the beef loin, which is which consists of the uh, what we call the middle meat. This is the middle meat, and that gives you your T bones, porterhouse, and your sirloin section. You also find in here your flank steak, and then the rest is a lot of fat and waste which usually get carted away and they make soap, soap out of it. Now here, here we go now to the loin. I want to get as many of the porterhouse steaks out of it. See this is where your hip bone starts. So this is about as far as it goes with the porterhouse. Porterhouse is very desirable because it has a large filet and a large strip loin. You know that's very much sought after in restaurants. And you can see here um, Again, the strip loin here and the fillet portion here, which then tapers down to the tail end of the fillet, often called the tornado, served uh, with surf and turf or different dishes. You can see as that fades out here, and by the end of your T bone, actually, you just simply have your strip steak instead. So, what we're going to do um, is now just remove that portion of the fillet mignon, work right along the uh, bottom of the bone here. And it almost, in a sense, uh, because it is used so little, uh, peels away from the bone. If you just uh, work the tip of your knife, removing some of that heavy fat. So that's your fillet, and on the other side, your strip loin. And then this will be broken down into steaks, uh, depending on how you prefer to serve it, however, however many ounces of a steak that you were using it for. Again, we generally do a quarter inch trim on the fat and remove that tail end of the fat, giving you that New York strip steak. Uh, this is again a, a choice cut, and you can see uh, based on the marbling of the fat here, uh, this is also a, a grain fed beef, um, which also heightens the amount of fat that uh, the animal has within its body. Again, this is the filet mignon. Let me just remove some of that trimming and the sinew along the top. And this can be sold as a roast or in steaks. Uh, in this case, I'll probably leave it whole. When you buy a whole filet, you can also take the whole filet out. Then the upper part, the thick part, is called the, the butt tender of the filet. And that's what I'm going to remove now. So what we do is we're going to remove the fillet, because it's a very desirable cut. Here's your top butt. Okay. That's the way we buy it now, vacuum packed. 
basically. Yeah. And then we cut it into steaks. Two ways of cutting this into steaks. Um, again, as you said, you can leave everything on. Obviously, we'll do the quarter inch trim again. Um, and then besides cutting the steaks um, like that, we also will go in and remove uh, something called the culotti, um, which is the, the bit, basically the tip of the sirloin steak. Um, it's really actually quite tender, um, can be used on the grill. We'll often use it in the summertime. Um, it's our favorite thing to use on shish kebabs. And then this is the heart of the sirloin, which then we would cut down for steaks as well. As we started off from the round, what would, did we get here? We, let's start off with the round pieces, which constitute the, the bottom round, the rump, your eye round, your beef knuckle, and then we got these um, nice London broils, beef knuckle, and uh, from the very top we got the the shank. Now that would be basically your, your round. And then we got into the steak meat, which gave us the T-bone and the porterhouse, but we broke this down further and we got the New York strips. By the way, this is a very nice marbled meat for a piece of choice. I like the quality and I think I'm going to take one home. Mm -hmm. And then from the inside of the loin, we, have, we got the filet these are the rows that are cut into individual steaks. And we have one T-bone here. And then when we got to the hip, we broke it down into the boneless sirloin steaks. And from the top, we got the kulak, which can be made into steaks, shish kebabs, London broil, there we are, the rest is bones and trimmings for chopped meat. And uh, that's your hindquarter. Oh, I forgot about the flank steak we didn't have. We sold earlier that somebody wanted it. <laughs> and um, that, that's a hindquarter, that's it. Make sure you tune in next Thursday instead of Friday for a special edition food service report where we take a look at corned beef in celebration of the St. Patrick's Day holiday. Now let's check in with James Serpico as he takes a look at this week's price trends and movers for the food service industry from Erner Berry's HRI Buyer's Guide. Prime tenderloin cuts are advanced this week. Improved demand coming from white tablecloth restaurants has played a large part in the higher prices experience for this item. Veal legs firms amid a light test of the market. The strength in that market is being attributed to more manageable inventory levels. Boneless skinless chicken breasts also went up in price under continued limits in supply and more active demand patterns heading into the spring season. Medium loose dozen shell eggs experienced a decline in price. Here, food service demand on shell eggs is seasonally average, but improved from last week. The overall market, however, remains on the soft side due to an oversupply. Thanks, James. And from all of us here at Erner Berry, thank you for viewing. Don't forget okay. to check back with us next Thursday instead of Friday for our next food service report, where we Probably will have a special edition for St. Patrick's Day. That wraps up Erner Berry's food service report and market report brought to you by Australian Premium Bands Incorporated. When was the last time your expectations were exceeded? Call Australian Premium Brands today and ask about their beef programs for high choice, choice, select, and no role equivalent from grain and grass-fed steers. Also ask about their certified organic yeah, I mean, Wagyu beef, beef programs. Visit them online at www.apbbeef or give them a call at 877-717-BEEF.